Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, back from my week away and I didn't look at the screen once and more or less I've done the right thing by not looking at it. My positions are just fine and everything I said last week still applies. The, uh, the wrist dial is very strong at 86. That is a very, very high score. And what is happening is that in, we went back to risk on on the dailies and I'm sure that we will go back to risk on in the monthlies uh, as soon as this month is over. Uh, the, the scores have not updated for a couple of days, but I know why that is and I'll fix it on Monday. So really there is nothing to be said uh, that's uh, terribly new. Uh, this environment is just not bearish for stocks and I will show you why uh, when we look at what the yield curve is doing and what the forward forwards are implying, which we will do next. Again, I want to start the bond review by looking at the very short end. And really, you can see what has happened, uh, exactly what I expected, basically from uh, September 23 all the way out to the 25s, we are now flat, completely flat. This differential of something like 20 odd basis points is is a completely flat curve. Uh, 18 months of 20 basis points spread actually gives you a, uh, a completely flat yield curve because of the way the forward forwards work. Uh, this is perfectly normal and totally flat. What has happened is that the 22s and the early part of the 23s have come down to anticipate faster uh, Fed rate hikes and rate hikes are traditionally bullish for equities. The first rate hike is a bullish hike for equities. It's only later on when the market feels that the Fed is going too far that that becomes bearish for equities. But we have many, many months of a continued bull market in equities as a result. Now, there is no reason to panic. Let's have a look. And this is this is a chart of September 2023. We are only uh, this. This was what 98, 90, let's call it. And we are uh, 30 odd basis points lower than we were in April. So we are hardly, uh, you know, doing anything ridiculous. If we look at uh, September 22, we are now, uh, what, not even 30 basis points lower than we were back in April. This, this is not a huge discount. And if we look at something like September 24, we are right where we were in, uh, in April. If we look at the uh, M25, so June 25, we are now well higher than we were in April. What does that basically tell us? That just tells us that the market is bringing, bringing forward uh, rate hike expectations. The taper is going to uh, be faster than the market expected. But that is all that's happening. This is not the stuff that bear markets in equities are made of. This is actually the fact uh, the uh, what uh, bull markets are made of. What this is actually telling us, uh, you know, once and for all, is that we have a strong economy which does not need the Fed's help for longer. That cannot be bearish. The only sizable position that I have um, and that I left on, two tens. And exactly what I thought what would happen has happened. Two stands to me are going down uh, and they're going down hard. Now, whether we go back up to 119 first and then break down below uh, this 98 level, uh, you know, 99 is, is neither here nor there. To me, there's only one path for two stands and that is lower. 
as the twos just cannot get off their ass, which makes perfect sense. Uh, and the tens and the thirties are absolutely anchored. If the tens and thirties are anchored, that means that we are still in a bull market for equities because then the multiplier is pretty much certain and all we're doing is deciding whether earning forward earnings are 210 or 215 or whatever for the full year 2022. Uh, to me, twos, tens are the safest trading instrument. The trend is going to be very clear I think at some stage we will come back down to these levels around the 50 area in twos tens. The other parts of the yield curve, fives thirties, fives tens, tens thirties are now going to basically be unattractive for trading. What do I mean by that? I mean by that that this was the part to trade and we traded it and now basically we are going to be in limbo for a long time. Five thirties, and this is a weekly chart, is no longer something that I'm attracted by because whether it goes up 10 basis points or down 10 basis points, I really couldn't care less. This is stability. Um, it's not, you know, this was the part of the, of the move that was critical when we we're 154 the uh, the risk markets really aren't going to care whether we are trading here around 81 83 or whether we are trading uh you know another 10 basis points lower around 56 57 that is really not material uh it, it's marginal for the risk markets it really isn't important uh as long as uh, tens, thirties don't go negative uh, because tens, thirties going negative is a, is a sign of impending recession. Uh, every time I've seen tens, thirties go negative, amazingly bad things have happened to the stock market. This is, and, and I mean dozens of percent, I mean not one or two percent, but a big, big move in double digits. Um, so as long as this remains roughly anchored around where we are now, and I expect it to be because it's going to take a long time to turn these moving averages, that is okay. That is a continuation of a bull market. As long as also fives, tens are around these yield levels, around this 40 to you know, let's call it uh, 29, uh, that's 11 basis points, who cares? That is stability. Uh, so what I'm saying is that the longer part of the yield curve to me is no longer interesting. The 530s, the 510s, the 10s, 30s, that is to me has played out. Uh, we are now in, uh, in a normalizing phase whether they move up or down one or two basis points, five basis points, nobody's going to care. Uh, and the longer term trend should now revert to the twos being the ones that are under pressure, uh, guessing how fast the Fed moves into the rate hike cycle. If we look at the individual tenures, we'll start off with the twos and they got to exactly where I thought they would get to around the 54, 55 basis points. A little bit of stability, you know, between let's say 40 basis points and 55 basis points. And then we go again. This is how much they fell when the Fed did the QE uh, back you know, sort of, what is this, February, March of last year of the pandemic. It makes sense that slowly, slowly, we will get to something like this kind of level. Uh, you know, somewhere around 100 to 125 basis points is my longer term uh, target which makes sense because if the Fed now goes into a three maybe four uh, uh, 
hike cycle that would take uh, euros uh, euro dollars which i showed you just the other side in in late next year beginning of 2024 will take them just over one percent and that is where eventually the two year is going to around the one percent mark i have n and that is why i still think the safest way to play uh, the the bonds and the yield curve is by doing something like the twos tens or even the twos thirties uh, on any kind of a dip. To me, the fives, the tens, and the thirties are now dead money. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to trade it, and I think if you think about it, the twos are at fifty basis points, and the fives are at you know, 100 was that 118 basis points. Why should there be a 60 basis point for a pickup uh, for the three years going on from um, whatever it is from 2023 on? It, 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 you know, it, this has basically gone about as far as it can go. I've said for a long time that 116 is my, you know, you don't own it below 116. But above 116, it starts being an attractive uh, tenure, the fives. I really don't think that they can go higher than 145. I don't think it can even get to 145. To me, from now on, we are going to be trading between 97 and just over 117 for quite some time. Uh, really, there is nothing really bad about the belly of the curve now that it has reached this yield. If we now go on to the tens instead, you can see how we are basically trading at the same range that we were for the whole of April and May. To me, this sticks around for an awful long time. Uh, tens between 168 and call it 100 and you know just below 150 base, uh, basis points is where we're going to be for a long time 30s the same thing if we have a look on the weeklies here on the uh, on the uh, tlt you can see how everything is coming in all the bollinger bands to me we'll be trading 148.90 for some time to come a little bit above a little bit below uh, you know, and on a yield basis, 191 basis points uh, up to something like 220 is about, you know, this is what it was there, 30 basis point range, 30 basis point range for several months before, you know, the Fed needs to catch up. We need to give the, uh, the Fed time to catch up uh, and we really can't go too far uh, away from the levels that we are now until the Fed starts the process. To look at Europe, it's now important to have a look at Euribor contracts. You can see now that basically from uh, March 23 out, we are trading below par, we're trading below 100, implying that the ECB will basically hike rates back to positive uh, sometime in 2023 if we have positive rates and but, um, but I mean we are now back to where we were in April in uh, in Europe in all these contracts uh, you know whether we are slightly above or slightly below uh, we are not a million miles away we're like five ten basis points away from where we were in, in April uh, that's all that's happening but that's it that's an indication that really why would you want to be invested in negative uh, interest rates in in bonds and bubble and things like that that makes you think right if we are looking if the short end is looking for a <clears throat> for uh, a normalization and for the ecb to have hiked rates back to positive in 2023 and 2024 how attractive can europe uh, fixed thing can be I've been saying for a long time that bobble is uh, to be avoided because it gives you neither yield nor protection uh, and is a short. To me, the uh, we have now closed 
at the highest level that we uh, since the pandemic. And to me, the, the trend has to be higher. You know, whether we come back to these levels around minus 48 to minus 52 and then go, it's neither here nor there. But if we enlarge this chart, we will see where the bubble came from. Uh, would I really be surprised if the bubble uh, traded uh, in, you know, around zero level at some stage over the course of the next couple of months. Uh, no, I, this is zero right here. Uh, would I be surprised? No, I, I really would not be surprised. Uh, the, the, the belly of the curve in Europe to me offers absolutely no value and I really can't see that I would want to get long of it at any, at, at any stage. I'm looking for levels to, uh, to short it and really around this kind of minus 49 area looks a good level to give it a, uh, a shot for uh, zero. If we pass on to the, uh, the Bund, uh, the Bund is just like the 10-year uh, note, uh, is now in a period of stability but I have no doubt that at some stage we get the headline that bunds have gone positive in yield. Um, you know, if we just look where they came from, they, you know, they came from roughly around here. This was basically equilibrium, uh, 33 basis points. So at some stage over the course of the next three months, I expect the headline bunds go positive in yield. And really any kind of a dip to around minus 22 to minus 30 to me is going to be a wonderful opportunity to put on some uh, three to six month uh, put spreads in the futures. The OAT uh, chart has been the clearest for a long, long time and, and really it gave a wonderful signal what we broke here uh, around the minus eight level. And now we are at 27 basis points and really at crucial levels. I would have thought that the OAT will probably give us a clearer signal than the Bunds on a break above um, and give us the timing for higher rates. I fully expect the, uh, the OAT at some stage to reach around the 58 basis points. Uh, not yet, but at some stage. And the one that's really at risk now is Italy, because every time you have a, uh, a rapid reassessment in the markets, the peripherals like Italy get hit really, really hard on a spread and everything else. If we look at uh, this chart, this starts getting uh, absolutely scary, doesn't it? Because if we start trading above here, we can really go percentage points. We can really go to somewhere around here without any problem at all. And that is 175 basis points and that's 60 basis points higher than we are, uh, you know, 60, 70 basis points higher than we are now. That gives you the trend. The trend in Europe is for uh, higher rates and I really wouldn't fight it. In fact, I would embrace it. One of the most interesting charts is actually the differential between uh, the US and Germany in tens. <sighs> you know, what can I say? It keeps on failing up here around the 180 level. Uh, and to me, this is beginning to be more and more negative as a chart. And fundamentally, that also makes sense. If you think about it, the US is a stronger economy. It's the locomotive. The yields there are normalizing, as I've been describing. And maybe it's time for Europe to start normalizing. If we go back, and I'm sorry, this chart has a bad tick, which is this one here. This never happened. Uh, you can see where we came from. Let's go back. We were trading very stably between 105 and 125 basis points 
for a long, long time. Uh, you know, this is going back to uh, 2020. I am wondering whether we go back there. And that would actually make a lot of sense to me. Uh, that Europe basically with a lag follows the US and the those charts that I just shows you come to fruition, i.e. the US does nothing and yields in Europe go higher by 30, 40 basis points. Uh, you know, something, you know, 125 is what, 40 points, 40 uh, basis points differential. To me, this level, and I will now uh, resize this so you can see what the absolute crucial level is. And it's here, uh, 153 basis points or so. If we start trading 154, 155 basis points, i.e. we break these lows and especially this low here, I think the trend in Europe will start to intensify and things are going to get quite hairy there. What to say about the dollar? Now, it, it really is a difficult one because if I am, uh, as I just showed you, looking potentially for European yields to start rising faster, to go faster than uh, US yields, i.e. US yields stable, and the Bund and the, uh, the bubble, uh, and especially now the, uh, the BTP and the OAT, to have a bit of a mare, you would have thought actually that the uh, dollar would get weaker and the euro would get stronger. It, you know, the yield differential hasn't happened yet. And this looks very much like the market just is rejecting trading below 93.63 and it wants to go and try 95.07 and this very, very, very important uh, swing level at 96.17. That's what it looks like and I think we probably will try to get there but probably this will be a wonderful level to trade simply because you are going to then possibly have the European yields kicking in. That would make sense to me. Uh, so if we have a look on a daily chart you know, we, we are really not, sorry, let's go back to the weekly chart. We have this area here. You can see how we are trading in, you know, when we trade above this area, we go quite a way. And when we trade below it, we go quite a way. I would have thought that, you know, you can see from the weekly Bollinger Bands, it's going to take a long time to get up there. Uh, but when it does, I think it's going to be a wonderful risk reward area because I think then it collapses back down towards this 92 area without any kind of a problem at all. So I'm, I'm uncertain. I'm not doing anything in, in Dixie uh, simply because the, uh, the macro situation is not very clear. I don't understand why it would go up, but it wants to go up. So let's let it and let's uh, let's trade this kind of area. As you can see how many uh, how many lows there are here around 95 something to 96, uh, 96 and change. That is the big risk reward area now. In terms of Euro USD, I mean, you can see the chart, you can see what the Bollinger Bands are doing. They're saying it's going to remain in this area, but you know, eventually in a few days time, they'll open up. And I think a drop down, just like I showed you on the weekly and the daily charts in Dixie is more probable than not, because a market that rallies so little uh, really is building up impulsion to break down to the downside. And really, you cannot exclude this 114.30 to 113.04 area. Uh, that it should trade down there. Uh, I mean, you know, th those will become minimum targets. But I still think at some stage the European yields kick in 
and when we are in this kind of area it will be a very very good risk reward play now whether this is a head and shoulders or whatever it is i don't know and i don't particularly care uh, the the macro situation tells me that the danger is that European yields do a moonshot when nobody's expecting it uh, and that has to be bullish for the euro and bearish for the US dollar. Um, therefore, I really just uh, cannot see how these kind of levels, uh, you know, just around the 112 area are not very, very good risk reward for a return towards the 120s. Well, gold, uh, you know, stability in bonds, which in US bonds, and you might get a kick up in yields in, uh, in, in Europe at some stage, uh, that is, neither bullish nor bearish the dollar going up a little bit is a tiny little bit bearish for gold so what's the end result it's just going nowhere um, if we just enlarge this weekly chart basically you can see that every time it gets to 1800 we're not even talking the 1840s okay because that breaking above that would be significant and would give us a big target um, you know sort of couple of hundred dollars higher <clears throat> this is really doing nothing to me gold is dead money for the foreseeable future um, I just don't see I mean I think the likelihood is more than we do a spike down uh, below 1700 again than we do a spike up above above 1840 I just cannot see what is attractive about gold unless you have a right now uh, unless you have a Fed which now again falls behind the curve and refuses to go where the market is leading, that would be bullish for gold because that would be, um, you know, sort of the Fed abrogating its responsibilities. But I, I, I really can't see that happening. Why would a central bank uh, not want to go where the market is? Um, you know, what do they know that the market doesn't? doesn't make any sense to me so um it i just wouldn't wouldn't trade it i would trade the the dump you know when the liquidation uh down here but in this area why bother above 18 1840 1850 it's gonna do a moonshot it's gonna go to 1912 at the very very least and most probably, you know, close to 2000. But until that happens, why bother? To me, DBC is still a better hedge than gold. Um, I mean, it's still in a downtrend. It, you know, it's basically going up and down, but within a downtrend. And I still think that at some stage we will be around the 638 area. You know, what is DBC doing? Well, basically, it's found resistance in this area, you know, very close to 22, as I said it would. And now it's probably going to do several weeks of back and fill, you know, probably come down to something like this, 2029, and then go again. Basically, that is it. Um, you know, every time DBC drops 5 to 7%, 10%, you shut your eyes and you buy it. Um, it's a continuation pattern. Uh, I see no reason why at some stage over the course of the next six months, it won't get to 24.39. And that will probably be a bullish time to buy gold uh, because then the spread will reverse. Um, and if we have a look at this, what's going to happen is basically then we're going to have this kind of a move uh, in the spread. Once it reaches down here, it'll go straight back up uh, and you will have a bullish moving goal then. But for the time being, I just can't see it. Well, last week, uh, so far, something like 300 companies out of the 500 in the S&P have reported. 
and you can see that basically the forward earnings are going higher and higher and so is the market. There's really nothing more to be said. Uh, the fact that the bond yields are as stable as they are, that the yield curve is normalizing as I've explained, uh, is, is bullish. Uh, there is absolutely no reason to look to short this market. Uh, there is plenty of reasons to look to buy any kind of a dip. Now, whether we trade, uh, you know, c can we trade up to 22? I mean, why not? If forward earnings are around the 215 area, uh, you know, and the bonds are stable around 2%, the long term rates, that is all that you really need to know. The likelihood of us dropping much below, uh, you know, the, the these levels that we were at the previous highs are not high, and therefore it's a continuation. Even even uh, rate hikes brought forward is not a bearish factor. The S and P does very well after the, uh, before and after the first rate hike. It's only the later uh, rate hikes when the market doubts that the economy can take it that uh, really do something bad to the S&P. For the time being, we're still in an uptrend and I fully expect uh, that we'll get to around, I don't know, uh, 4,800, something like that by year end. As you can see from a weekly chart, basically we're now hugging the top of the Bollinger Band. We're in a period like this. There will be dips, they'll get bought, and the, as you can see, the, uh, the upper Bollinger Band, 46.12, and the week before that, it was uh, 45.89, so we're going up, uh, let's call it 25 ticks per week. So, 46.30-ish uh, next week, that's the kind of level that you're looking for resistance and you're looking to, uh, to take some profits. The 195 minute chart is very clear. It just cannot close at all below 45.38. Uh, 4538 now becomes your big support and the area that you are supposed to buy every time it dips. I'm gonna show you this mess of charts here. XLY, XLP basically gives you the direction of the market and it couldn't be really clearer. Uh, it, we've broken past the previous highs uh, and basically the discretionaries are leading this market up. I just wanted to show you that, uh, you know, it's as clear as daylight. We are in an uptrend. Uh, the one I don't like is XLF because to me that is now dead money. Uh, whether it keeps uh, pace with the S&P or slightly less, to me that's really not important. What is what I'm what what I'm thinking is that basically XLF cannot be a driver, and therefore the drivers have to be XLY and XLK. Uh, so really it's important to know what XLY and XLK are doing to get the overall direction of the market. Until XLK starts breaking above these highs, the market cannot accelerate. But it looks to me at some stage like it will it'll break these highs and basically XLK is going to take the market higher. Uh, whether we look at NDX over SPY or whatever, we are seeing this, now, whether it's gonna take a few more weeks, these are all weekly charts. So it could take several more weeks, it could take until year end for that to happen. But to me, it's pretty clear that that is what's eventually going to happen. And, you know, as usual, XLK will be the driver and the one that takes us up. Which dovetails nicely with NDX. As you can see now, uh, after the period of weakness, it's back at the top of the Bollinger Band. The Bollinger Band is going to expand very little next week. 
you know, 50 ticks or something like that. So we're probably, you know, fairly close to uh, topish levels for a little bit. But if we have a look at the uh, 195 minute chart, it's fairly clear now that we are in an uptrend that all these uh, dips down to 15,693 on the NDX are going to get bought. And certainly any dip down to 15,323 is going to get bought. We really don't have any more big earnings uh, and therefore the trend should be fairly well set now for a slow grind up in NDX and eventually a break of the, um, of the spreads that I showed you against SPY and NDX should then accelerate higher. I wanted to show you with this chart of SPY over EWJ, which is Japan. We've gone straight back up and I think this is unsustainable. Over the course of the next several weeks, this is going to come back down. Having said that, let's get rid of that one and have a look at Nikkei because I would have thought that Nikkei is the one that's going to show us the way. It is to me fairly likely now that Nikkei starts to break higher simply because that spread is unsustainable and I'm still bullish for uh, for the US as I showed you earlier. That to me says that the risk reward now that these elections in Japan are going to be over we are going to try and test the upside around this 3,400 on a daily basis and 3, 30, sorry, 30,400 and 30,200 on a weekly basis. Uh, we have the room on the Bollingers to do it without any problem at all. And I would have thought that the Nikkei over the course of the next couple of weeks should be rather interesting to see if we can break up above this highest close that we've had on the weeklies which is 30,200 if we can do that then uh, the Nikkei could also lead us higher Europe and this is the stocks and this is the DAX you know it, it needs uh, it needs the DAX to participate for stocks to go significantly higher but we are breaking, we are breaking up. Uh, to me, there's very little doubt that we will uh, break higher in both the, uh, the DAX and the stocks. If we have a look at a, uh, at a monthly chart, my objective has been 4,512 in, uh, in the stocks for quite some time. And I think by year end, we achieve it. So that's another, what, 5% move. Um, and I think that we will uh, get there without, uh, you know, too many problems. It, there's just nothing bearish that I can see about risk. Um, and there are no reasons that I can see that dips will not be bought in absolutely everything. I also wanted to show you this clean chart that I have with the levels. Basically, the S&P, as long as it stays above 4,537, 4, let's call it, uh, it's just as bullish as it, as it comes. The trend is still up absolutely no reason I mean I'm long and I until it closes below 4,537 uh, I will continue to be long because there is absolutely no reason not to uh, to respect this trend it makes sense on a macro basis it makes sense on evaluation to bonds uh, there is nothing uh, on the horizon that I can see that is going to derail this. I know famous last words, but why fight it? There is absolutely no reason to fight this. This is a world reflation trade. Uh, it, it 
it's working, uh, it makes sense, it's just going to go higher. Is volatility giving us any warning signals? Well, I don't think so. This is the daily chart and basically if we enlarge this, what is it, what is it saying? It's saying that it just can't stay below 1550. But that to me is a uh, relatively bullish sign because all the uh, moves back up are contained. Nothing above 2005. Uh, I, I have for a long time been saying that the top, the absolute top in equities, whenever it comes, and I have absolutely no idea when that will be or why it'll happen, it'll be accompanied by higher volatility because the market will start going up 2-3% a day, that kind of thing. Uh, to me, there is still no sign we are contained, we are trading sideways. Uh, this is the stuff that continued grinds in, uh, in equities are made of, you know, the stuff that goes up three quarters of a percent every week. Uh, and that basically, uh, takes us about three to four percent higher than we are now in terms of uh, in terms of S&Ps uh, by year end. On to the bias sheets. Well, to me, two tens are still the trade every time it goes back up towards 119 to 129. It's a wonderful opportunity. As I said, my ultimate target for that uh, for that part of the yield curve is somewhere around 50, 60 basis points. So it's, you know, the one you want to play. 5s, 30s, 5s, 10s, 10s, 30s. I am now neutral and I'm saying it's not worth playing anymore. It's given you the direction, it's normalized, it's done. Whether it moves five, basis points up or five basis points down, it's really going to be no indicator for risk. It's not something that's really going to move it. I've changed the levels here slightly, but to me, fives, tens and thirties are now going to be relatively stable trading within a 20 basis point range. The real danger is here, is in Europe. I, d I think the ECB is going to be able to contain it for a while, but one day you're going to get the headline Bund's positive. Uh, and it's just, you know, I just think it's almost inevitable. I, it's inevitable that, the, uh, that Europe at some stage really catches on, uh, catches on fire and catches up with the States. And this will be the, the absolute... Uh, the, the you know the thing that gives you the the clue uh if it starts breaking this 159 to 153 basis points uh then europe will be in trend i've changed the levels here in the um in in, in the uh risk parameters it they're all there basically to me 4538 is absolutely key I think next week might be a bit of a slow week because we have these Bollinger Bands very tightly packed and we are right up against them. And especially NQ isn't going to move very much in terms of uh, Bollinger Bands. So, you know, might be slow and might be a week to look at Nikkei uh, on the open as opposed to anything else. Everything else, gold, I still don't find it attractive. DBC is in a bit of a uh, bit of a consolidation phase, so I really can't see much happening there or anything very attractive. Thank you very much indeed, and tweet you tomorrow.